Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Love Joy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, please hit the subscribe button so that way you can uh, check out the other videos. And if you've been here once or twice, thanks so much for coming back and getting creative. In today's video, we're going to do a really nice beginner painter. So this is good for those of you um, that don't have a whole lot of experience with the painting process. And I fully believe that with more and more practice, you get more comfortable with the process of painting. So that's what these videos are for. For your supplies, there is going to be a link in the description box below. So check out what you need, grab the supplies, and then kind of pick up the video for the painting portion. You're also going to see a link below for a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my first time and beginner painters to transfer their image onto their canvas and not have to stress out about drawing and you can jump right in and focus on the painting process. There is also going to be a video on how to transfer your traceable with carbon paper um, or even graphite paper. When you're ready to take your skills to the next level, check out my online school paintwithlovejoy.com and check out the Paint Your Pet course. Um, in that course you will be painting from your own photograph and you'll learn the value scale of your pet's fur. And the, it's a kind of a basic skill that once you learn that, you can actually apply that to many other creative processes. And when you paint something that you love, you actually put a little more energy into it and everybody loves their pets. So like I said, when you're ready to take your skills to your next level, check out that course and um, enjoy the process of painting your pet. With this video and any of my videos on the channel, you have full permission to switch out colors and make this your own. Just use this video as a base um, and get extra creative with your paintings. So uh, I think that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. guys it's gonna be another fun painting so grab your supplies uh, transfer your traceable to your surface and as always make sure you take your progress photos now what you're gonna see on the video is I uh, went over my traceable with a black sharpie marker and that's more for those of you that are gonna draw what you see um, at home but if you are uh, just using the traceable you do not have to do this so we're going to start off painting the background and you can see that I just demonstrated a few different brush strokes to try and we're going to do a light cream color and that is white with a little bit of raw sienna and we're basically going to be filling in that whole space. Now if you're one of my first time painters take a deep breath just relax you're doing a great job I'm glad you're painting at home. Now, if you want to change out any colors for this painting, please do that. Make this your own painting, uh, switch up colors so it fits your decor a little bit more, um, but have fun with it. When I did research this for Chanel, her favorite colors were uh, black, white, and cream, and red, I believe. So that's what I stuck with. Um, but feel free, like I said, to switch out colors to anything that you want. I also want you to paint a little bit thicker, especially if you're using student grade paint. Um, we will throw a little bit of white in there and do some blending and we'll also throw a little more raw sienna in there um, to give her a shadow of where she's sitting. So if you apply your paint a little bit thicker, it makes it a little bit easier to do some of the blending. So here we're grabbing some of that uh, raw sienna and putting it right on top of the background, kind of almost where there's a seat or a bench that she's sitting on. Um, and so you just kind of slap it on there, right there like I'm doing with the white, and then you go back over it with your brush and move your brush back and forth. This is called wet on wet blending. And if you even want to finger paint while you do this, go right ahead. And if you are on a stretched canvas, carry your color around the sides of the canvas to look nicer when you hang it on the wall. And as you saw a moment ago, pause the video, take your progress photo. I did move down to a smaller uh, medium flat brush and we're going to be using black for her dress, for her hat, um, and I believe that's it. And again, like I said earlier, feel free to switch out colors if you want blue or purple or you want to put a design on her dress. Um, this is your uh, painting and your fashion statement, so feel free to make it what you want and accessorize it to 
your liking. And no matter what you paint, if you paint this or you accessorize it and change it up, uh, please send me pictures of what you paint and just email those to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. And again, with this black paint, I am applying it pretty thick. Do take a notice of how often I am going back and grabbing more paint. Um, if you apply it a little bit thinner or you apply a lot of water with it, um, you'll notice that you can see the canvas kind of uh, shine through and it'll be a little uh, less opaque coverage. So I encourage all my students to adjust based on the variables that you have in front of you, which is your paint, your environment, and your comfort level. And if you need to, if you need to switch to the small pointy brush, go right ahead. Um, I tend to kind of stick with the exact same brush and turn it different directions. Um, but like I said earlier, adjust for what you need. And again, if you're painting and you're holding your breath or you're finding that your brush is shaky as you go to apply your paint on the canvas, um, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas and that will make it a little bit easier for you. And hopefully while you are painting, you kind of just get lost in the process and forget about the rest of the world for a little bit and work on just transforming this blank surface into something you created. And for that aspect alone, I am very proud of you for taking time out of your day to get creative and paint. This only benefits the rest of your daily life um, when you incorporate creativity into your day. And if you are using student grade paint and you need to do a second coat, feel free to do that. I will not do that in this video because I did apply my paint pretty thick, um, but totally okay to layer your acrylic paint. And with that being said, if you want to use different materials for this, if you want to use crayons or colored pencils or markers, feel free to use whatever material you have at home. All right, so now we're moving to the pointy brush. We're going to just grab that direct red and we're going to fill in just a few of her accessories. Uh, we're going to give her some red lips, um, that earring and a bracelet. So as you're working with the pointy brush, light pressure will help as you're working in these smaller spaces. And again, notice how often I go back and grab more paint to apply it thick in these areas. Now, if you are a little nervous about doing this, you can fully let the black paint dry before you move on uh, to adding this for the accessories. Again, with the world of art, adjust based on what you need. So another place to uh, pause the video and take your progress photo. I do want this to fully dry before you do the next section. Um, it's going to be super exciting. We're going to put white on the white canvas, basically for her skin and I guess a kind of cuff link or um, cuff of her dress by her wrist. And this is just so that way we have something on the canvas. If you feel like putting more of a skin tone, you can mix this white with a little bit of raw sienna, or you can put a completely different skin tone. Um, and play with your raw sienna and even a little bit of red mixture or even if you want to go darker raw sienna and a little touch of black. Um, or if you want to do crazy colors, go right ahead and do that. So as we apply this again, we're just filling up the canvas. We are going over those traceable lines and this just makes sure that we have something on all the canvas. And I believe we will be going over that little cigarette as well and her hand. Um, and after we put this on, we're going to be making little dots for her pearl necklace. And I will show you two ways to apply the dots when we do that. All right, so to, uh, two ways to apply the dots. Um, still using the pointy brush and the brush end, holding that brush perpendicular to the canvas and literally touching the brush to the canvas and pulling it right back or flip that brush around and use the back end of the brush. And I actually kind of prefer this method. And again, every two dots that you make, um, grab more paint. And it is kind of nice using the back end of the brush just because it's going to be the same uh, consistency, same diameter dot or circle uh, compared to if you use the brush end. A little more pressure makes a wider dot, lighter pressure makes a smaller one. And if you have varying dots in there or you want to get very specific with your accessories or change the color, um, go right ahead and do that. If you did want to throw in a splash of color, teal would actually look really nice um, with these other colors or even red for another pop color. 
and I believe she had quite a few strings of pearls on there, so it's okay if they overlap. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. It's pretty cool that even just as we see this, it may not be a full realistic necklace, but our brain interprets it as she's wearing multiple strands of a pearl necklace. And that's half of art, is just kind of um, tricking the brain and creating this magical illusion on this flat surface. And same light pressure as you put that cigarette on. And if it's too much for the cigarette, um, you can leave the white of the canvas. So take that progress photo, and now we're going to go back to the black paint. We're going to do our outlines. So again, keeping that light pressure, if it is too much to do some of these skinny lines, um, especially for the cigarette and kind of the contour of the face, you can fully let your paint dry and you can use a Sharpie marker. Uh, but your paint has to be fully dry for the Sharpie marker to transfer appropriately. And as we're making these tiny skinny lines, you can see that I kind of have my pinky out using that as a steady pivot point for my hand. You can also um, rest your forearm against the edge of the table, whatever you need to do. And if you have um, varying widths of lines, that's just where you're at for today. When you go to do um, lines again after today's painting, what you're learning today and what your muscles are remembering, it will be easier the next time that you do this. And kind of keep that in mind for pretty much all of creative outlets. Um, it may be a little awkward the first time, but your muscles remember that. And when you do it a second, third, and fourth time, um, you increase your comfort level. So there's nothing wrong with pushing yourself outside of the comfort level, uh, acquiring new skills, and then strengthening the things that you are already good at. And I believe uh, we do outline the earring as well as the bracelet. And I think I put a few little lines in the bracelet completely your call um, how you want to accessorize this painting. And again, really proud of you guys for painting. Um, don't wait too long to do your next one. Just keep building on your skills. For that cigarette, if you do want to give her a little bit of smoke coming out of there, uh, go right ahead and do that. If you even want to switch it out and do one of those long, fancy cigarette holders, uh, go ahead and do that. <laughs> and if you need to, go back and touch up any of the red, any of the black, anything that you need to do for your painting. So thanks so much, you guys. Like I said, don't wait too long to paint again. And until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you liked how your paintings turned out. As you're uploading your photos to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I can't stress enough how much uh, your feedback, your sharing this with the community and sharing your photos has helped this channel grow. So please keep it up. You're doing a great job. And you're getting more people to try painting and realize how much fun they um, have during the process. So keep it up. Um, anything that you'd like me to paint in the future, please leave a comment and I will add that to my production list and get to it as quickly as I can. I am a solo producer here, so um, they do go a little bit slower than I would like, but hopefully we'll be able to bump that up one day. But either way, um, I'm still thrilled with all the pictures and the stuff that you guys are painting at home. So until next time, have a great day, and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers.